The University of Detroit Mercy presents another brand new episode of Ask the Professor, the radio show on which you match wits with the University of Detroit Mercy professors in an unrehearsed session of questions and answers. Today's program was recorded using Zoom video conferencing technology. The University Tower Chimes ring in another session of Ask the Professor the show on which you match wits with the University of Detroit Mercy professors in an unrehearsed session of questions and answers. I'm your host, Matt Mayo, and let me introduce you to our panel for today. Center square on my screen and in my heart, it's Professor Beth Oljar. Aww. Aww. Oh, <laughs> Thanks. Good to be here. I feel so special now. <laughs> Isn't it it's just the greatest analogy ever, like center square? Uh, yeah. Charles Nelson Riley and Bethel. Paul in, Paul in, Paul in. Yes. What am I thinking? <laughs> am I even a member of my generation? I don't know. <laughs> no, no, no. Matt, for your generation, might be Waylon, Waylon, Madam. Oh God. <laughs> Sorry. Either that, or maybe one of the Muppets. Every once oh, in a while, it was Kermit the Frog or Miss Piggy. That's definitely <laughs> speaking to my Generation X side of things. Well, uh, good luck finishing up with uh, Harry Potter uh, tonight, uh, Beth. You've made it oh, yeah. all eight movies again, huh? Uh, yeah, we've done it. I think we've done that a couple of times now. So, yeah, it's always nice. fun to do every once in a while. I think because Drew was watching the um, Fantastic Beasts series, yes. Yes. Um, and that made him want to uh, watch Harry Potter again. So nice. that's how that ended up happening. And just in time for, uh, you know, you can't escape. Gosh, um, my kids are literally obsessed with the um, Halloween themed baking challenges that are on Food Network. And they've already all started over the last week. So, uh, you know, you're, you're finishing up just in time to get ready for Spooktober here uh, in a couple of weeks. So I have already bought uh, two of the six huge bags of candy that I typically go through nice. uh, on a Halloween. So better to buy them a couple at a time otherwise the amount of money i spend on candy just you know kind of gives me a heart attack but that's right i may or may not have gone to costco last night just to get some water and notice that all the uh, um you know halloween stuff is already gone and uh, all the christmas stuff is out so uh now that we're rushing things it's what? all the clam chowder is gone already oh incredible sorry a man who needs no introduction, but what the hey, we'll throw it in there. It's uh, Professor Dan Machio. Uh, hi, Matt. <clears throat> How are you? What's going on, Dan? Oh, not much. Another another busy week. Yep. That's the way it is lately. Have you successfully, I mean, I feel like I'm like violating HIPAA, but you know, whatever, we're all buddies. <laughs> um, you know, have you successfully avoided covid during the four month time scale where everybody on planet earth has had it five times these last four months. So, well, I had it in May. Oh, well, May. there you go. You were at the does beginning. That, does that count? <laughs> I, I uh, haven't I, had it. I don't think. Oh, you're in good shape, Beth. You're in really good shape. I'm just thinking um, lately, just every, everybody, everybody I know has is out or is sick with something else or has COVID or it's just, yeah. I was supposed to have a dental procedure recently, oh. and then they they called me and canceled because everybody on the staff was out. Oh, like, oh dear! Better that That's than having good. their hands in my mouth. So, <laughs> didn't feel right. I, I'm glad to hear it, Dan, because um, I know <clears throat> you're going to be uh, traveling soon, and uh, uh, make sure you stay safe when you do. Yes, I just realized that I'm going to be traveling next weekend. To Canada. Should I be careful? Uh, something to ponder. That, maybe I'll say that for my imponderables answer. There you go. <laughs> what, your, your, what, your favorite Canadian app or something like that? What? Yeah. No, just being careful not to do something stupid and get stuck in Canada. Oh, see. That, which wouldn't be bad, but. Wouldn't be the worst. Yeah. Thing. I mean, universal health care. There, there, there's the worst places you get stuck. So, I mean, yeah, it's true. All the way around the horn, we're at uh, Professor Dave Chow, and his house is now one. Well, well it's actually a, l a little bit more expensive than that, but I, mean, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I wish, but uh, pleasure, pleasure Dave, to be here. They've, uh, they threw together that project faster than I can imagine, considering the scope, right? Um, wow. It's just like... And it's that's... one guy. Yeah. 
one guy mm-hmm. and he just hires all the right contractors. Right, right. So I think he, that's he, cool. He moved. He moved very quickly. So yeah. I'm thankful. Speaking of moving, it looks like two doors down from you, closer to us, uh, another uh, house going yep. up for sale. And here I was honored that they were like tidying up their yard all summer long. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but the, but the sad thing is they, they bought a house recently in Beverly Hills. Oh. And they, they loved the house because it had a nice willow tree in the front yard. Well, two days after they closed, the storm blew it down. Unbelievable. Oh, dear. Oh, so timing mm-hmm. is bad, so. Horrible. But we'll, we'll miss them. That's all. They, they they do have the world's coolest little white dog that they walk all the time. So it's really cute. Yep, I'm responsible for more, you know, massages and rub downs. I care talk about with that dog. So. <laughs> it's also a great way for clean cleaning off hands too. So yeah, just use the dog like a nap. Uh-huh. <laughs> we are uh, honored once again to be joined by Professor Megan Conrad from the Department of Mechanical Engineering. Thanks for joining us again today, Megan. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yes, uh, I don't know what you learned from your uh, last time around the bend uh, on the podcast here, but uh, um, let's see if we can put it to, to good use. How, how's your <laughs> semester going so far? It's going well. It's going well. It's Excellent. a little more normal than the last couple of years, I think. Oh, normal. Positive. Normal. A new, uh, I said a little more normal. More normal. Huge yeah. air quote. Huge yeah. air quotes. <laughs> Can you give us an example of a course you're you're teaching this term, Megan? Well, I have I have the senior design projects, which I've taught for several years, but the assistive technology projects. So this year they or this week they all went out and met their clients. And this year's group of seniors is really excited and engaged. And I'm excited to see what they do. So absolutely. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Just one of our greatest pieces here at the university to see. Um, how healthcare and engineering sort of come together and really make a, literally a direct difference in these. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Nursing students and engineers and sometimes some biology students. And it's really fun. Yeah, very cool. Very, very cool. Well, folks, this is a program. You can send us questions regarding anything. If you stump the panel, you win a prize. If you don't stump the panel, you win a prize. You can send us the questions in a number of ways. You can email us at atp at udmercy.edu. Find us on Facebook and Instagram or listen on your favorite smart speaker by asking it to play Ask the Professor at University of Detroit Mercy. Here we go, dear professors. I sent in questions last October and was pleasantly surprised to see how fast they were incorporated into the show. Well, it's been a year since I've contributed by sending in stuff. I hope the professors are up to the challenge of answering my list of 20 questions Thanks again for the wonderful entertainment, education, and laughter over many, many years, Laura Benson. Laura sends us questions just about once a year, and I guess the time has come. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, we're, We're getting to the point where we're getting long in the tooth in a good way. I believe the university tracks the start of this show as 1954. Uh, So it, at one point when it was Uh, mostly on regular radio, we were the longest running radio program in the United States. So it's pretty, pretty exciting stuff. Okay, it looks like we're all over the map with this. So we should have fun. What US state has on their state seal the words labor, omnia, Vincent? And what does that mean? Uh, Conquers all. Um... Mm -hmm. You've got it. Yeah. Labor conquers all. Work conquers all. Oh. But what state is it? What's a hardworking state? <laughs> they all are. Could I mean, be any state. Seems like some industrial Midwest. Oh, like in Indiana or, or Ohio. Ohio. Or, yeah. If it turns out to be Oregon, I'll be could really be, there. Could, could be like, oh, no, no, labor. Well, work I'm could be. Say, Plains, Plains. Oh, okay. Nebraska. Close. One of the Dakotas. Kansas? You mean the Plains is in the land or as in flying? Like or is it boring? Oh, oh okay. okay. <laughs> Kansas, Iowa, Nebraska. Oh, what else is out there? We had a state in our last show. Oklahoma. 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 Oh, okay. Oklahoma. What? Work conquers all. You do know if Jim was here, he starts singing a couple verses right about. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Boomer Sooner all the way. Come on. Come on. Who are the two NHL hockey players to still play? Only two of them did this after they were inducted into the Hall of Fame. Kind of a cool mm-hmm. trick. 
Gordy Howe and Gordy Howe, definitely, yes. And Gretzky. No, no, uh, Guy Lafleur for the Rangers. Was Guy Lafleur was the other one. Yes, oh. but Wayne Gretzky is a totally acceptable guest in this category. Totally acceptable. <laughs> Good to know. It's the yes. only one I had. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what musical group was once offered by the recording label the names The Darlenes, The Sweet Peas, The Melodies, The Royal Tones, or The Jewelettes? The Supremes. It was the Supremes. Yeah. Did you know that one, Dan? Uh, one of those sounded familiar, probably from a show I saw on PBS on oh. Motown or something. <laughs> well, it had to be one of those 60s girl groups. That's, yeah. yeah. Right. Right. It's, uh, it's really, uh, my wife said this the other day because it was on TV for the gajillionth time. It's about 15 plus years old. The um, sort of mini series they made about the life of the temptations is actually made around here is very cool. And one of the things that they really hammered home that I'd never seen with my own eyes, you can read it on a printed page, but just how much Barry Gordy had adopted Henry Ford's efficiency principles into what he was doing at Motown. They would go and perform sometimes even on the same night as different group names until he thought there was chemistry with the audience. And then that's the name you got. So he was really all no about kidding. that group. Yeah. It's so, so these groups had many, many different names throughout their career. I, I believe if I remember correctly, that the first version of the Temptations was the Primes and it just felt kind of- Yeah, weird. and what was it that, was it the Supremes of Primates? Because right, really, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Even before, you know, the Supremes and all these other ones. He was a marketing genius for sure. Absolutely. Uh, oh my, a little bit of crossover with our last show here, but we're having fun. What's the southernmost country of the South American continent? Uh, Argentina or Chile? 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 Yeah, yeah. It's Chile. Oh, man. Chile wraps right now. around the tail of Argentina <laughs> and becomes the southernmost portion. Yeah. What is. Okay. <laughs> um, what is Doritos roulette? What does Doritos roulette refer to? Weird. Doritos roulette. Mm -hmm. uh, like which you reach... flavor you're going to get? or It's pretty Wait, close. You pretty reach close. your hand in and see if you can pull out a full chip. <laughs> Wait a minute. Nice. If, Matt, nice. Is, this, is this like that um, Jelly Belly game that you brought into the studio that one time? <laughs> No, it, it, it's very, very close to what, what Dave and, and Beth have already mentioned. And, and why not? Um, always looking for a whole chip. In 2015, Frito-Lay launched a version of Doritos where one out of six was the probability to get a super extra spicy chip. But you Ooh. couldn't tell it apart from the other one. So Doritos. Hmm. That. You can actually with the Cool Ranch Doritos, which are a personal favorite of mine. When it, I, I like the whole chips too. And when you get to the, all the broken up ones at the bottom of the bag, Drew calls it mulch. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't want too much mulch. But the, you can see on some of the chips, the extra layer of seasoning that it has. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Makes call sense. it roulette though man that's brutal yeah exactly exactly holy smokes never heard this one before but it's it's on the engineering side megan so here we go no pressure many, none uh, <laughs> none yeah. not uh, well it's sort of mechanical how many elevators do you think there are in just the empire state building proper separate elevators oh 20 it's more oh wow Wait a minute, don't they go up to a certain floor then you got to jump onto another one to go yeah. higher? 50. Higher. Wow. 88. <laughs> I'm, I'm going for a, a solid partial credit there. Very. It's exactly 73 elevators. Oh, wow. Absolutely incredible. That's, that's a lot of elevators. That keeps Otis in business. So. Yes, they do. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. Hey, I just want one working for CCS right about now. That's that's all I'm asking for. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, those years of Noel Knight. What um, in what year would you say that Oxford University opened up uh, enrollment to women? Nineteen uh, ten. So it's going to be earlier than that by a reasonable chunk. Eighteen fifty. Again, 
you know, within the wheelhouse. This is the second part of the question. It's 1879. That's pretty progressive for that time. Okay, yeah. However, <laughs> they were just allowed to go to class. They were not allowed to graduate. Oh, of course. When. Wait a minute. So you would go to class and do what? Do I sit there and look pretty? Or what? Well, I you'd learn, but presumably you'd never get a degree, right? You right. they wouldn't so you could take classes. So you would you would pay for these classes and <laughs> just Probably. learn, just learn. Or or, or is the, the, the privilege to be eye candy for everybody else? I mean, I mm. what's the what's the purpose of it then? I well, learning for its own sake. I mean, yeah. I'm sure there were women who were just glad to be able to, you know, get into right. a class at Oxford. But so let's just round 1879 to 1880 for the sake of argument. Uh, it was not until 40 years later, the class of 1920, that a woman graduated with a degree from Oxford. Wow. So, well, I, I'm wondering, could they have gotten like a certificate or something like that? Good question. Good question. Well, higher education was bad for women's health. That was the belief in the 19th century. <laughs> but not for men. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. It had something to do with our fragility in some way, I'm sure. I'm yeah. sure. Yes. Fragility. Okay, sure. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm just mocking. I'm being mocked. We're girls, Dan. We're <laughs> fragile. <laughs> <laughs> Megan's like, yeah, right. <laughs> I'll kick all your butts. There is a uh, state in these great United States that has three towns whose names are Ed, Oz, and Uz. That's E D O Z mm. and U Z. What state has three towns in it? Ed, Oz, and Uz. New Jersey. That's where Dr. Oz lives, right? Is that Ooh, where he, uh, all his mansions. He's running for he's running for office in Pennsylvania. Yeah. I hope Fetterman totally kills him. That would be glorious. So it's not Jersey. It's not Jersey. It, it's in Kansas. I mean, you're you're yeah, Oz, your, Oz Kansas the, would Yeah, mm, then the I Jersey, like what you're thinking. But it's not Kansas. How about like Alaska? How about it oh, starts with a, the same first letter as Kansas? Kentucky. Kentucky. It's Kentucky. Yeah, mm. Kentucky has so Ed, is there, Oz, and is there any reason we would guess Kentucky from those three? They just know. like to have short names so it saves the them names? on printing. You know, we have to Kentucky. ask Kendra. We have to ask Kendra when we see her. Mm -hmm. All right. That's true. That's Kendra. She would know. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't read ahead. Otherwise, I would have held off on this. But uh, it says this question is especially for uh, Professor Tubbs. Uh, Megan. Jim Tubbs from Religious Studies recently uh, retired, just loves questions about uh, ocean liners. So let's see what we can do with this one. Um, there are three ships currently in the service for the Cunard Line, and they're all named after um, Queens of England. Uh, do you know what they are? Uh, QE2, Queen yeah. Mary, QE2, Victoria, Victoria, and, and Mary. Queen Anne. Queen Anne, Queen Victoria. Da, da, da. No. It's this not the Queen Mary. Queen, oh. obvious one. Queen. Queen Elizabeth? Yeah. So you said QE2. That was right. The Queen Victoria and the Queen Elizabeth, I would assume that means the Elizabeth first. The first. Yeah. Okay. But um, they are working on a Queen Anne that is due to be um, uh, built by 2024. So there will be another one. In that are they going to chop its head off? They're going to wait for the chips. <laughs> Uh, all I'm saying is that Leslie literally is reading a book about Queen Anne right now. And, you know, she's reading the book. I find it all over the house. It's just her <laughs> reading. And so sooner or later, I start thumbing through it. And I'm like, wow, this is that's some pretty interesting stuff going on with Queen Anne. Is it, a, is it about Anne Boleyn? No, this is about Queen Anne proper. I, I don't even know how to refer to it. But uh, um, the bottom line is um, I it, recently published book even though they've known for some time through the historical record that she was who she was and she married a guy and they had kids. And that's why, of course, we have all the rulers that we have today. But uh, late in life, she fell in love with one of her best friends who was also female. Oh, and dear. Uh, it did all these political things that were absolutely fascinating at the time. So it's just interesting, just interesting. Yeah. In the Disney classic, Snow White, how long was Snow White asleep before the prince awakened her? Oh, boy. You gotta uh, love stories where all the good mm, women are sleeping or dead. 
<laughs> was, right? Yeah, and then some guy has come by and wake her up with a kiss. I'm like, geez. Let's say six months. It was longer. A, a year. A year. Oh, yeah, she was asleep. Oh, for I was going to guess a cool year at story. first. And like that would be a bad thing. Why would you? <laughs> why would you want to wake up? We're, we're just jealous. Yeah. That's all. It would have oh, to be a God. really good kiss. That's all I can say. Oh, oh. oh my gosh, that's hilarious. So it's a, it's a little bit of a tongue in cheek, but you know, it's just the way that the question is written. In what city was Philadelphia cream cheese supposedly invented? Hint, it wasn't Philadelphia. Yeah, I was going to say, oh. East New Coast? York. Yeah, yeah at New York's a good guess. It's a, um, a suburb, Chester, but I mean, New York, New York is, is pretty good. But I mean, because they have that huge rivalry, right? Um, it's just pretty hilarious to think. Uh, of course, you know, we have to explain to people every time we talk about Coney dogs. Well, you know, there was yeah. <laughs> from all these people from New York. And... With or without your rat trappings. That's also. Right. Oh, oh, yeah. Nice. Nice reference there. <laughs> nice. Oh, my gosh. What do um, Charles Darwin, Neville Chamberlain, Stephen Hawking and David Livingstone all have in common? Same birthday. No. David oh. Livingstone. Same but... middle name. Nope. That's a good guess. Um, they've all uh, been somewhere at the same time. Dan Maggio's kitchen. The same time? Africa. Somewhere in Africa. Nope. Darwin, Chamberlain, Hawking, and Dr. Livingstone, I presume. Megan, do they owe you money? Oh. <laughs> so <laughs> Hawking and Chamberlain are British. So's Darwin. So Darwin. They were so, somewhere. Yeah, were, they at o- were they at Oxford? Cambridge? Getting closer, not school. Got to be in a museum. I mean, we're at the corner pub. Museum is getting really, really close. Uh, uh, the Natural uh, History Museum, mm-hmm. the British, you know, the British the Library, something. Uh, they know? all wrote Madame the... Tussauds, the Wax Museum. They were all done in wax. Oh. The same time. So I don't know. It's just from a perspective, but Beth is is getting pretty darn close. You know, they're all buried in the same nave of Westminster Abbey. Oh. Asking, um, my wife, being the Anglophile that she is, I'm like, are we expecting QE2 to, to end up Mm-mm. in Westminster? But she's not going to be there, right? No, she's, so, not, no, she's not. She's going to be with her husband, which is what they wanted. Everything, yep. so. uh, Open it's... up your televisions very early on Monday morning, and you'll learn everything you need to know. What is, speaking of Westminster Abbey, the only grave, uh, which is kind of ironic if you think about it, that forbids visitors to walk across it? Every one of the other ones you can touch. and Yeah, that, that and creeped me out a little bit. So yeah. There's one you can't walk across. In Westminster or in? Mm-hmm. In Westminster. Henry uh, VIII. Henry VIII? It's not Henry VIII. I'm trying to think of a good way to give you a clue, but the truth is... I don't know how to give you a clue about this one. Is it a, is it a knight? No. However, it says it says that this person was likely a warrior. Is what it says. You know what it is? It's, it's not Joan of. Oh, go ahead, Beth. It's not Joan of Arc. She wasn't. Nope. She was French. Um, it says it's their version of the Tomb of the Unknown. So it's oh, called okay. the Tomb of the oh. Warrior. That's, and, that's uh, respectful. Yeah. You cannot know who this person is, so it's always roped off. But if you want to walk across Newton's grave, it, you right it on creeped me out. Oh. <laughs> there are a lot of people buried in that, Abby. A lot. Okay. Uh, based on the way that Vegas keeps its records, which entertainers hold the record for the longest running headliners at the same hotel show? Wayne Newton. That's a good guess, but I'm going to put these in. I mean, not that Wayne Newton isn't in the modern era. I'm putting him sort of a generation and a half back. These folks are still at the Rio and they've been there for a long time and they're very, very well known performers. They're still on TV. Blue Man Group? No, that's a good guess. The Tiger. Uh, David Copperfield? Not Copperfield and not Siegfried and Roy. Thank you. Oh, oh, oh. Well, they're dead, aren't, aren't they? Both of them. Both of them. Yeah. Are right. they both passed away? I think so. Yeah. Are, are we? Are are these uh, uh, singing acts or? 
they are mostly into comedy and magic. Oh, Penn and uh, Teller. Penn and Teller. Penn and Teller. Yeah. Penn and Teller. Oh. Yep. Penn and Teller at the Rio. They've been there many, many decades. And they have that uh, sort of weird show that's on one of the other networks yeah. <laughs> yeah. where they see if they can figure out how tricks are done. Oh, well, it's actually pretty, a, that's actually a good show. Pretty cool. Yeah. Pretty cool. They did an episode of uh, The West Wing where they were there for one of the, the Bartlett daughter's birthday parties and they appeared to burn an American flag in the White House. Yikes! Yeah, caused quite the this. conundrum. I remember this. Uh, this is a good one because I, I'm just going to be honest with you. I, I will get rid of a couple of your first guesses to start with. I always heard it was either the Ohio State University or the University of Minnesota, but as of fall 2019, what U.S. University has the largest on-campus population, it is neither of those two. Tennessee? University of Michigan? Mm -mm, mm -mm. Um, university, one of the California state universities? It is, it is deep south, and it stands at over 61,000 enrolled. Wow. In it's got to be like oh, University of Texas a, or something. Texas A&M. No. Is it one of the Florida schools? There we go. Is it yes, South Florida it or Central Florida? The fastest growing university <laughs> yeah. in the United States, the University of Central Florida. Central Florida, yeah. yeah. It is uh -huh. burgeoning, burgeoning. What is, what's their appeal other than warm weather? I mean. Warm weather. Tattoos <laughs> and proximity to Daytona. It's Florida, what? you know, so. Yeah. Okay. Professors, what college did our good friend, Mr. Jeff Bezos, graduate from? You graduated college? But mm -hmm. college? Yeah, I'm like, it's honorary or is it a legit? Uh, it, it How much did he pay for that degree? Oh. I'll guess the University of Washington for no reason. But. No, it's it's a good guess, but it's an Ivy if that narrows it down. Oh, oh. okay. Uh, Columbia, Harvard, oh. Brown, Brown, Princeton, Dale, Dart Dartmouth, Princeton, Princeton. Yes. Princeton. Yeah, and it doesn't say whether it was honorary or not. So we're just going to say, all right, 126 credits. I will yeah. donate X millions of dollars. Give me the honorary degree. Thank you. Right. Okay. What five U.S. cities have the most high-rise buildings that exceed 500 feet in height? The first one has 294. The second one has only 127. Chicago and New York, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we got New York is number one. Chicago is number two. Cal he Houston or something? Houston Houston's or... number four. Yeah, yeah. Houston's yeah. Number four. Uh, San Francisco? No. Seattle? Back to Florida for your number three. Biggest city in Florida. Miami? Miami, yes. Okay. And last but not least, and, and not, many people, not many people know this, uh, this is just the way they used to measure progress post, you know, industrial age. So number five is actually LA with a paltry 31 buildings versus the almost 300 in New York. But this is how Chicago got its name, the second city, because they were mm. building at the rate that was on par with New York City. They're just greater than 50% behind. It just wasn't going to be Clawson. Yep. Yes. We we kind of have views that we like to see on the West Coast, you know. There so we there we go. Yeah. Hey, professors, where is Detroit on that list? Uh, your hint is it's in the top twenty-five, but what ranking is it? We are twenty-five. Eighteen. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to give it to you, Megan. If we're, <laughs> we're number twenty. We have seven buildings that exist. Oh, seven. Oh. Oh, so I'd be the Rensen, the Fisher Building, okay. Penobscot, David Gar Whitney. Guardian. Whitney yeah. Scott, maybe Doing pretty good, and That's the UND awesome. and the tower. Don't forget oh, yeah. the tower. tower at the University of Detroit Mercy. Exactly. Oh my gosh, we had just enough time for this show for the last question on the list. So thanks oh. so much for sending these in, Laura. If you've been collecting them all year, you did a great job. Mm -hmm. uh, let's end uh, with something even more bizarre than anything we've done on the show. Uh oh, what European country was the first 1986 to open a Taco Bell. Oh, th this is definitely a Kendra question. Okay, now uh, I'm really hungry for a chili. Yeah, I know. Between chili and taco, <laughs> well, different kind of chili, but I'm like. The first don't, don't think too hard on this one. It, can't, it, it couldn't be. No, Germany. 
No, it couldn't oh, be Spain. Is he European? It couldn't be Spain. That would just not be right. Oh. Germany, Portugal. France. Por Portugal. The French wouldn't allow it. Oh. <laughs> Switzerland. Austria. There's a super obvious one that hasn't been mentioned yet. That super obvious one? Taco Bell? Yeah. Why? Well, they've said Spain, but that yeah. but not I guess that's too obvious. I, I don't know. I it's uh you know it's just the plain old United Kingdom. I mean they like a lot oh. of oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. things that they have, you know. So, All right, okay. Yeah. Oh, it sort of works out that I, way. Oh my gosh, so hilarious. I don't think it, I, I mean, ever saw one when I was there, but okay. But, it's, but, 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 but is that like opening like Panda Express in Beijing or something like that? I mean, <laughs> right. like, oh my, oh, geez. I, I know that there's a joke in here somewhere about every single McDonald's closing in 24 hours in Russia, but we'll save that for another show, you know. Mm -hmm. because, uh, even McDonald's has a soul when it comes to <laughs> the <laughs> empire. Uh, professors, I'm so sorry. We did such a great job and these questions are so great. The time has come for us to say goodbye, Dave. See ya. Dan. See ya. Beth. Bye. And Megan. Bye-bye. And now these words from University of Detroit Mercy. Ask the Professor is transcribed in, you know, all of our homes, but usually it's in the Briggs Building in the Department of Communication Studies in the College of Liberal Arts and Education at University of Detroit Mercy's McNichols campus. Ask the Professor is produced and technically directed by Michael Jason and Brian Masonville, and our executive producer is Professor Jason Roach. Until next week, I'm your host, Matt Mayo. <laughs>